morning. Would you please rise for the lighting of the candles? Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful? This is a beautiful day, isn't it? Our Lord God has created this day just for you and me. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is an awesome day. Our Lord God has promised whenever we gather in His name, He will be with us. So let us gather our thoughts and minds and our voices together to say, Good morning, Jesus. We agape you. We want to do anything for you and for your church. Bless us, anoint us, enlarge our territory, and keep us from causing any pain to you and to others and to ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for granting our prayers. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Let us share the peace of Jesus with one another. Elbow kiss. Little bit. I like the first uh, volume. Peace be with you. Let us gather our thoughts and minds to worship the Lord. And this is a Hawaii's way to welcome you. Please be seated and let us enjoy. Mele Kalikimaka. Mele Kaliki Maka is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. That's the island greeting that we send to you from the land where palm trees sway. Here we know that Christmas will be green and bright, the sun to shine by day and all the stars at night. Kaliki Maka is a wise way to say Merry Christmas to you. I oh, know, one more time. Mele Kaliki Maka is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. That's the island greeting that we send to you from the land where mom. Good job. Let us gather our thoughts and minds for the Advent wreath reading. The Advent wreath probably began during the Renaissance period in a place now known as Austria and Hungary. The making of the wreath was a family custom. Evergreen boughs, cones, nuts, fruits, and berries were gathered from the forest. Grain was harvested from the fields. The family prepared the wreath from these materials on the first Sunday of Advent. Then they placed the candles, signifying the waiting period in the finished wreath. When they lighted the candle, they read scriptures, offered prayers, and sang hymns. On the third Sunday, a rose candle was placed in the wreath and lighted with the other purple candles. The rose candle signifies joy and happiness. 
Thus, we light the third candle of our Advent wreath today. As our candles are being lit, think of the light that is coming out of the darkness. And out of the darkness, light shines, pointing us in hope to Jesus Christ, who is light for our darkness. Thank you. Please rise for the call to worship. Let us first recite the Apostles' Creed in unison as the proclamation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, we come to worship you today because we love you and we want to love you more. We come to worship you needing your love in our lives, love for family, friends, strangers, and enemies. In this hour of worship, touch our hearts, fill our hearts, open our minds to your love which passes all understanding. O oh God, search our hearts and reveal to us all the iniquities that we may lay them down at your feet and be cleansed by your blood. O oh God, make us holy and be in charge of our worship and our lives. Lord, Lord, anoint our pastor, praise team, and all others who are involved in this service and worship. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debt, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
there to him. He's here with us. Give him your love. He's in love with us. If we heal our hearts, oh, he will cleanse our hands. If we rend our hearts, oh, he, he will heal. There's a song in my heart that the world never knew. There's a peace it cannot take away. But my Savior came down, even laid down his crown to redeem me and then set me free. His precious life He gave my soul to save And now He reigns forevermore King of kings, Lord of lords And He'll never depart My Redeemer, my soon coming King there's a song in my heart that the world never knew. There's a peace it cannot take away. But my Savior came down, even laid down his crown to redeem me and then set me free. His precious life He gave my soul to save And now He reigns forevermore King of kings, Lord of lords And He'll never depart My Redeemer, my soon coming King my Redeemer, my soon coming King. And my Redeemer, my soon coming King. Thank you, Hula Halau. Today's Bible passage is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. If the congregation can please read along. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf unstopped. 
Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the huts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there, and those the Lord had rescued will return. They will enter Zion with sing singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. May the Lord God add his blessings upon this reading. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Good job. Thank you. Praise him, our new pianist. Thank you. Thank you. Let us lift our hearts, minds, and draw closer to our Lord Jesus as we worship. Let us pray. Open our hearts, our souls, our minds, all to him. Oh, Lord God, consecrate us, our hearts, our minds, our souls, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we live as your sons and daughters, and celebrate the season that you came in anticipating your return, preparing our hearts for joy and hope and peace and love that you have come to give us as we are reminded of your provision, providence, your mercies and grace. O oh Lord God, anoint us from head to toe. Yes, Lord. May the words of our mouth, meditation upon our hearts, be pleasing to you always. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen, Amen. amen. So, as uh, you noticed, this uh, third Sunday of Advent, the theme is joy. And joy represents pink color. So, third Advent season, we wear pink. How many of you remember that? It doesn't matter whether you wear pink or not. This is Sunday. Joy to the world that the Lord has come. Amen? And sing for joy. Why? A song in my heart, in our hearts, because my Redeemer came down and to save me from the bottom of the pit where we were. Hallelujah. And a lot of people, when God says, sing for joy, make a joyful noise, and we hesitate because we cannot carry a tune like me. I'm half off. <laughs> and cannot keep up with the beat. But some people are singing very well, like a John, right? And sopranos, altos, and bass, and baritone, baritone, and all. Whether you sing soprano, you sing alto, all sing together, it is a really joyful noise to our God's ear. Mm -hmm. And God loves his children. Make a joyful noise, not only 
loud and audible, but also inside, inner joy. And make that song bottom of our hearts. That's why tone deaf and half deaf or whatever cannot keep up with the beat can sing, make a joyful noise. If as long as it's the bottom of our heart, praising God and giving thanks to God and hallelujahs. Amen? And then some of us uh, may think, well, I would like to sing, make a joyful noise, but my life, look at my life. Things going on in my life, I cannot sing and joyful. Looking at my situation in the whole wide world, the world is going on, and one pastor answered the phone, very, very, um, you know, depressed kind of voice. I said, what's, what's wrong? Uh, and he goes, well, things are going on in, in my life. And what's going on in your life? Well, war in Ukraine. That was the injustice in happening in the world. And uh, the inflation and worries and all this, that pressured him to lose his joy. And I said, joy cannot be lost, right? And that's uh, he's talking about, so we start talking about the difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is uh, emotion, temporary. What's going on around the world? What's going on in my life, in my family's life? What's going on at my work? That's uh, happiness, unhappiness, right? Joy is what? Shout it. Hmm? Joy cannot be shaken because it comes from God. It's a permanent. It's a state of mind that the, the stand on the truth. Truth is what? The Lord has come to save us. And he is here with us. And he will be with us. What God has done, what God is doing, what God will do, that gives us a unspeakable joy down in our hearts. That's what the third Advent Sunday is all about, the remembering how great our God is, how much God loves us, and God's providence, provisions, providence, and promises, God's plans for our lives. In spite of all that situation going on, we can Rejoice. That's what the Bible says. Rejoice always. This is a will of God for you in Christ because Christ is our foundation to rejoice always. Now, this uh, Isaiah chapter 35 is that now Israelites during the Isaiah time, they rebel against God, right? So God let them be invaded by the foreign powers. Now, this time, and a couple of handful chapters, Isaiah was uh, prophesying the return to the Lord and uh, obey his commandment, and otherwise you are going to um, be punished. And so people living in a fear of God, fear of a punishment, and judgment, God's judgment will come. And then suddenly, chapter 35, hello, hallelujah is coming. And 35, this is. In the, so they were still in exile, and Isaiah prophesied the vision, what God will do for them. And we know God did it, right? And so in spite of their situation and Isaiah prophesying that all the saints of uh, uh, God will will return to home and singing, entering the Zion, singing hallelujah, singing joyful noise and singing rejoice and expressing how great 
their God is. We know this is true, right? We know. But how do we practice in our daily lives? And in spite of what's going on, how can we sing for joy in spite of? And I've come up with a two E's. If we can remember to do two E's, okay, two echoes, and we will be singing, sing for joy in our lives. Amen? So let's read verse 1. So, can you picture the wilderness? Imagine, I mean, somebody mentioned that this generation is going through poverty of imagination because everything is right in front of us, right? We have a short attention deficit, attention deficit, short attention. But imagine, what is desert like? Wilderness like, parched land, dryness, thirst for water, thirst for blessing, thirst for some relief. Can you imagine that? Those situations, those land, the wilderness will what? Rejoice. Blossom like a crocus. Why? Why is that? He's saying, the Lord God is coming. And Lord God has a provision for you. Lord God will share his blessing. Dry land will receive some rain. Bless the rain. Parched souls will be quenched with spirit of the living God. Wilderness bear the flowers. Can you imagine wilderness bearing flowers? Uh, desert bearing of flowers? Now, I want you to hold this image. Hold your life. Any areas of your life. It's going through dryness. Something is dead inside of you. And parched. Thirst for divine anointing. And this crocus, I'm not a gardener. This crocus, you or life in that area and lift up your prayers and draw near to him and lift it up. Lord, this is the area that I am thirst. I am dying and pour out. Pour out your blessing. Pour out. Share your anointing here. Let me taste sweet release. And so that my life, even though I can see the dryness, I can see parched land, even though that I expect the flowers, rose, roses, and crocus blossom in my life. You know, the gardeners tell us these uh, crocus flowers they will bloom first thing in the spring, even though under the snow even blossom. 
do we expect God to do that in our lives? Mm -hmm. You know, there was um, Haiti had a real big earthquake. And 11 days after, nobody expected to rescue any survivor. And under the rubber, under the rubber, and they rescued a guy. I forgot his name. But he was, first thing he wants to do is have a TV interview to say, thank God. He wants to go to church to say, thank God, and thank you for your prayers. And 11 days, what he did was sing a psalm, sing a hymn, and pray. That's all he did. He never lost the hope because somebody going to rescue me. Because Jesus came search for me when I was under rubble. And he will come again, rescue me. And it happened. Hallelujah. He expected a miracle and miracle happened to him. Our expectation is very powerful. Or you may say, well, that's just one case, right? What about other people? There are people who died that still have prayed and sang, sang hymns and prayed to God to be saved, saved and expected to be rescued, and they died. What about that? Now, let me ask you, would you rather live 11 days or 11 years or 110 years, praise God and have a hope to be res rescued and to have a joy of life? And during that time, during you are going through the darkest time of your life, under the rubber, under the pressure, under the stress, or, and die. Or grumble, 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 and die. Which life would you choose? Which life our God wants you to? Hmm? Expect, expect God's miracle. I mean, you guys go to Las Vegas all the time, sit in the, what do you call it? Slap machine, all right? If, when, you think the slot machine is not going to give you any happiness, would you do it? I mean, slot machine, okay, there's a slot machine. If I give um, $1,000, it's going to all suck up and I will get nothing. Would you, any of you, would sit in front of the slot machine and doing it? No. You expect something return. Happiness, right? And we Believe the machine will give us a happiness and reward us as we expected. Our oh God, who has created a whole wide earth, the universe, He has the power. He has the power to change our lives, to change our situation, to rescue us from the robber. Rescue us from. How come we don't expect our God to do some miracles in our lives? Hmm? Oh, it's never going to happen. And 10 years I suffer through. It's never going to happen, you die. Or you expect it will happen, you die. Which one? Expect the goodness. Expect the, the crocus. What do you call it? Blossom in your life. And say it. Prophesy it. Amen? That's when a song in my heart never goes away. I will sing for joy. Amen? Every time our faith leads us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's a powerful God. We are not looking at the situation. Situation will change my anything, but 
God, the mighty power, we rely on Him, mighty power will change for us as long as we keep expecting. Jesus says so, right? Jesus says, whenever you pray, you ask something, what? Expect you received it, then it will be yours. It's in the James, book of James. Only five chapters, you read them all. Amen? So what is our first echo? Amen. Amen? Don't trust the thing, slot machine. All right, let's read the verse uh, 8, I believe. And the highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. Amen, amen. What is that? Highway will be there. It's the way of holiness. And... No wicked will walk on it. Only holy people, only redeemed one will walk on it. And then uh, 8, 9, 10, talking about there won't be any lion, any beast, any virtues, any, any, any malice, anything will be on it. Any wicked people on it. It's a utopia. It's a describing a vision of a heaven when we return to home. This is a homecoming. But for Israelites, their homecoming from Babylonian exile, and they were, they will be the highway, the way of holiness. What does that mean? Everybody loves to drive in a highway, not in L.A., though, right? I, you know, when we go to heaven, if you see the stingray driving Autobahn, that is me. That, I will never buy a Ford, a Ford a Stingray Corvette and... And I will never probably be able to go to Auto, Autobahn in Germany. And I will do that in heaven. Highway without congestion is a very nice, smooth, right? And high, a highway equals what? What? The way of holiness. What is the way of holiness? Hmm? <laughs> yes, way of holiness is highway. Way of holiness is a way to become more like what? Jesus, right? And then there will be a highway for us. So when we pursue holiness, when we follow the Lord Jesus, and with all our might and all our hearts and all our souls, then there will be highway. Does that mean there won't be any beast and lions and whatsoever there? No, we are going through life. There will be beasts, there will be virtues, and there will be wicked people. But how come the Bible says will not be? Yes, and Jesus will protect us so we won't see it. We will have a power to cast them out. Jesus will cover us. Why would Jesus do that? Huh? He, he loves us. Amen. God so loved the world, right? He sent only his begotten son. Whoever believes in him would not perish and have everlasting life. He came down to give us a redemption, to save us. Only redeemed ones will travel heavenly highway. So 
Are you redeemed? Yes? But are you able to go through highway all by yourself? No. You need what? Jesus. His power and carry you to through highway. Amen? And a lot of times, our Lord Jesus has come. The Word became flesh. This is our power. And He sent us the Holy Spirit. Right? And we have a power. We are walking with the Jesus. But we are not close. If Jesus is the center of our lives, center of our hearts, minds, and we're going to be so powerful. But we always put Jesus in the corner. Or sometimes uh, away. We move away. And we say, God doesn't answer my prayer. Because I don't feel the presence of God. Why? Because you moved away. God is here. God is there in your life, in our lives. But we moved away. How do you know you moved away? You don't study. You don't meditate. You don't pray. You are busy doing other things. And you are aloof. What God has promised you. God's provisions. God's plans. God has promised us. Each one of us. Has, God has a great plans for your life. Not to harm you, but to prosper you. With that, only one verse will keep you going. If when we are intact, aligned with our God. You know, there is a story about a, a guy, son, who wanted a piece of land that his father already put in his will that is his. But he couldn't wait until his father died. Right? It's like a prodigal son. And so he demanded that, hand it over to me right now. Right? And father resisted. And then he took off. And for 10 years, he didn't talk with his parents. Finally, his mother had enough. So she scolded him, persuaded him. So he came home on Christmas. Okay? And he was kind of cordial with everybody except his father. He was aloof, distancing his father. And when the gift time opening, he opened all the gifts from everybody else except his father's. His father's gift was like a necktie-shaped uh, box. And then it says, uh, to my beloved son, and love that. Right? He never opened it. Guess what was in there? The deed of the property that he wanted desperately and neatly folded in the necktie-shaped box. He never knew. Until he opens it, then he's going to be, realize he's very rich, right? That's a precious. A lot of us do that. A lot of us. Our God has... Uh, Given us greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. And God has given us the spirit of the living God. And we do not open it. We do not open our hearts and minds to utilize, to execute the power that God has bestowed upon each one of us. We do not embrace God's plan and Purpose. That's when 
We are going through a lot of time and we keep on crying, I can't deal with this life. Until we open it. Amen? This, this season, please open your hearts, your minds. Open God's gift. We all receive the Christ. We open the God's gifts, gift box, but there is more. That let Christ, the, the Spirit of Christ, indwells and just center in your life. Then you will have an enormous power to overcome any, any trials and tribulations in life, any illness, any broken hearts, anything. Amen? Then we will have a song in our heart and we can sing, make a joyful noise to our God, praising our God in the midst of our trials. Amen? So what is the second E? His resources. So many resources. Not only word of God, not only prayer and fellowship with one another. Amen? It's uh, easier said than done, right? We are human beings. We are emotional beings. And we often have a mixed emotions. And we want to be joyful and we forget that happiness is not equal to joy. And our base of joy is what God has done and God will do and God is doing right now in our lives. Remember Mother of Jesus, first Luke chapter 1, and when the angel announced you will be pregnant, she says, let it be. How can this be? But it is the will of God, let it be, right? And then at the end of the chapter 1, guess what she's doing? Singing. Sing praise to God. Now, this is uh, amazing. In, in the midst of trials, she's uh, singing, right? Because a 15 years old woman pledged to marry to a man suddenly got pregnant. How can you explain to anybody? Still, a lot of people don't believe. Virgin birth. How can you? And can you imagine the, the neighbors and people and friends and families look down on her? All that trouble headed of her, and yet she's singing. And she prophesied on her life. All the nations will call me what? Blessed woman. Blessed woman. And indeed, right now, as we see, but during those 33 years of her life, oh yes, she went through a lot. Only three years she rejoiced, right? In our the emotional stage. When Jesus, she cherished all that God's plan for her life, let it be. And she cherished for it in the deep down her heart for 30 years. And then Jesus finally became the public ministry. And first thing she ordered him to make her water turn to wine, right? She knew. I mean, she had this belief in her. She cherished and she expected and on the cross, what is that? How do you, as a mother, how 
to you bear the hurt agony of seeing your son crucified. It will make anybody, everybody crazy unless draw, execute the power of God. Embrace her life, God's plan and purpose. Otherwise, it would have destroyed her. Amen? And Bible is filled with, filled with examples, examples. So this third Sunday of Advent, and uh, as we prepare for the Christmas, hallelujah, let us make a joyful noise. Sing for joy. How do we, in spite of uh, terrible seasons, how do we do that? We can expect Amen. That's when God's going to bless your socks off. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. Your amazing love. If, when, we grasp how much you love us, how precious we are to you, and you sacrifice your son to save us, to redeem us, to help us to walk in a highway. How, what else you could not do for us? You exchanged your son's life just to have us in your family. Help us, awaken us as we prepare for the coming of Christ. Celebrate his birth. Celebrate his return. Yes, Lord God, prepare our hearts. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us uh, take a moment of silence, lift up our hearts and minds and our souls. Pray, pray, pray the prayers. In Jesus' name, let it be done. Thank you, Jesus, for listening and answering to our prayers, unspoken, spoken. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen, Amen. Now it's time for us to give our tithes and offerings and ourselves to the Lord. Are you ready? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for all that you bestow upon us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. 
Thank you, Father God, and bless all the givers, not only for monetary, but also of their time, their love and their spirit um, to bless you back, Father God. And um, may it be used wisely um, for here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please rise. Sing that salad. go forth into the world celebrating and preparing to welcome our Lord Jesus in the center of your life and center of your heart. May the grace of our Lord Jesus attend you, love of our Father surround you, and the communion of the Holy Spirit strengthen you from now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And John I want to Jonelle has a praise report here, and I just want to praise our God. We had such a beautiful day, full of joy and full of love. Yes, it rained, it blew, but man, did we see a lot of rainbows. I just want to thank everyone that was there that helped, and I want to thank all of our community for all their wonderful donations, which bless so many people's lives. Um, it was just a beautiful day, and I, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you provide for us so that we can provide for others. Um, and we, we made almost $4,000, so it was a good day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chona. Thank you, John. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Diana. And thank you, uh, um, Violet and Doris. And thank you, thank you, everybody. Did an awesome job, awesome job. And you know, as we got rained out and as we worked together, it was such a blessing, huh? Yes. And. One announcement that everybody get to hear. Did you close the streaming? Oh, it's still going on. All right, that's good. Because uh, next Sunday, okay, we are going to have a fourth Sunday of Advent service. And then right after following, we are going to have a Christmas Eve service, candlelight service, so that 24th Sunday, I mean, 24th Saturday evening, you don't have to come. Since we're not going to invite any public, we are going to do it, celebrate like a Christmas Eve on 18th. That is just awesome. So uh, after, after service, we're going to close up everything and we do a Christmas Eve service. Amen. So bring all your friends and families who would like to join in the, the, um, the candlelight service and tell them if they don't want to come um, regular service and just come for um, candlelight and they can join us at 10 o'clock. We try to finish it by 10. Okay? I am happy. How about you? <laughs> so streaming is done now. When we have a private party here. See you next Sunday. Any prayer request?